Welcome to Home Farm and episode 7 of our Air Source Heat Pump Experience. So we're going to address the one question that we've been getting a lot of recently, which is how do we control our central heating through, because we've got underfloor, we've got air source, we've got radiators, what controls do we use to get that to work? Um, both individually and also cohesively as one central heating system. Now, I'm not going to lie, we have a, a very complicated <laughs> situation going on here because we've got air source and radiators and underfloor and it was a retrofit, so we inherited the underfloor and the radiators um, and, and then we put in the air source. So because it's a retrofit and because we're, um, and we've inherited stuff from the previous owners, Ours really is a jigsaw puzzle, mm -hmm. I'm not going to lie. Um, we're going to try and explain our system as simply as we can. Um, and there might be a lot of cuts in this video while we yeah. keep stopping recording and talking to each other. <laughs> because there's an awful lot that I even get confused about and we have to stop and try and figure it out and then try and figure out how we're going to explain that clearly. But um, we will do our best. Mm -hmm. As we mentioned, the previous owners had put in underfloor heating. Put in underfloor heating yeah. and in those rooms that we had underfloor heating there was a little thermostat on the wall yeah and that basically reads the temperature of the room and that little thermostat calls for heat um to say we need to get the underfloor warm again yeah then we had the radiators and the radiators were was on the um, upstairs level and the radiators previously had the uh the dials that were yeah, just the old school one through five ones yeah one through five ones so that is basically what we inherited. Yeah. We came in and made the following changes. So the first thing that we did while we still had the oil boiler is that we purchased smart TRVs and put those on all of the radiators, replacing them and actually setting heating schedules for all of those rooms. Now with the oil boiler, the oil boiler was only set to come on so many times during the course of the day. So let's say it came on from seven till nine. If a room and it was quite warm came up to temperature, that smart TRV would say, okay, I'm up to 21 degrees, I'm shutting myself off. Uh, and then basically the remaining hot water would get circulated to different portions of the house. So in a standard conventional kind of um, home mm -hmm. uh, that maybe has got a gas boiler or yeah. an oil boiler, you could easily go to your ra radiators and swap out your one to five yeah. um, dials and put in a, a smart TRV. Definitely. That smart TRV basically will help to um, when you put it on a five, for example, you whack up to five and the, that, that radiator is just going to keep getting hot to five all the time until the, the whole central heating stops mm. and, and switches off into a different schedule. Yeah. What we wanted to do was to, to stop the radiators from overheating, so to speak, from just heating continuously and unnecessarily. Rooms unnecessarily warm. Yeah. So the, the smart TRVs basically go on, they are really dead easy to change. Yeah. Um, you literally turn, turn it off, swivel it off and put a new one on. Very easy, anybody can do it. And um, that gives you a digital reading immediately, ours is digital for example, and it just says mm. you know, 21, and then that speaks wirelessly to our phones, our smartphones. Mm -hmm. And that was where you were able to change our schedules and change the Set settings. temperatures and everything else. For each individual, um, really? radiator yeah. um, and uh, and that was great that we have got the Eve um, mm -hmm. smart TRVs yeah, Eve Thermo. very happy with them they've worked a treat amazing they're battery controlled uh, the batteries basically run out within a year uh, so they are very easy to install as you said and they're hugely functional and they really do serve a purpose yeah they they look attractive they're aesthetically yeah. pleasing and they do the job mm -hmm. so that's what we did for number one yeah Okay, what, do, what did we do next? So I mean, things do get quite technical because there are so many differences between air source heat pumps and gas boilers or yeah. oil boilers, uh, purely because the oil and gas boilers come on for periods of time, heat rooms up, drop in temperature, uh, and they're all set on schedule. So basically, you will set your gas boiler to come on at a certain point in time in the day, it will heat up for a couple of hours, and then it goes off and then there's no heating running through the system unless you, again, set it to come on. Yeah. With the air source heat pump, because it's on all the time, yeah. you do have to have some finer controls for that. We've discovered that anyway. Uh, in our system, you just got to be able to 
manipulate and control things a little bit better. To really optimize it and to get the most out of it oh, yeah. and make it as optimal and as energy efficient as Definitely. possible. Really, that's what our goal was. So with the air source heat pump, because it needs to be on all the time, it is running 24 seven, but there are times when the temperatures do rise within the house and maybe the whole house does come to temperature. So you need to give something and an instruction to the air source heat pump to either turn off when that happens, or if the temperatures drop, you need to send an instruction to the air source heat pump for the for the pump to come back on and to start heating water. Okay, so just go start with the underfloor because right. that's the kind of most simple thing. Yeah. So um, uh, we when we took when we took the property, it had underfloor in the living room and kitchen, and that had a heat miser thermostat on yeah. the wall. It was the most entry level basic thermostat that they had had installed, um, and. What was wrong with it? Why did we change it? Uh, the one in the hallway actually just oh, died. It, out, it just yeah. stopped working. True. So we went online and found that they had the, the smart ones, which were a little bit more expensive, uh, but it was a really easy to, uh, an easy replacement because the wiring is exactly the same on the, the new digital ones versus the other one. Uh, so we were able to replace all of those. And that basically now gave us full control over our underfloor heating, uh, utilizing uh, our smartphone app. And again, you did that, mm -hmm. you installed those, yeah. um, and but you could easily get an electrician to do it. It was very, very simple, very yeah. straightforward, um, and uh, and it was almost exactly the same size. It just slotted on. So we took off the, the heat miser one with the dial, and then we put this one on, and it's got like a, a screen. Um, we'll show you. It's, it's fully digital. So the underfloor heating's a lot more simple mm -hmm. in, in, in the way that it calls for heat. And the reason for that is because all of the units, when the owners did it, the previous owners, they had hardwired all of those thermostats back to the to the central points in the utility room. Yeah. So even though they are wireless, um, they are actually wired to the control center to call for heat. Yeah. The wireless component is basically the fact that we can control temperatures and schedules through our mobile our phones. Phone. Yeah. That's Excellent. the wireless component. Yeah. They are still hardwired, but the controls are wireless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have three zones for our underfloor heating. We've got the living room the kitchen, diner, and the hallway. And all three of those have got three separate thermostats on the walls. So if any one of those rooms comes to temperature, it basically shuts off that zone. The actuators and our underfloor heating manifold close that room off and then basically remains or heats the remaining two areas. The handy thing about the thermostats is that they call for heat and they regulate the temperatures all in one. So you've only got one unit that does both of those. Yeah. That's not the case when it comes to radiators. Yeah. Not in our case. <laughs> Yeah, the radiators in our case are a lot more complicated mm. uh, because the actual t uh, the actual TRVs are not hardwired back to the utility room. Despite us having these smart TRVs on all of the radiators, if the room drops in the, below a certain point temperature-wise, there's nothing to call for heat. So in order for us to be able to get around that, we've had to put in wireless uh, thermostats, smart thermostats, in the coldest portions of the house. So when temperatures drop, these smart thermostats send an instruction back to the air source heat pump to say, you need to come on because the temperatures have dropped and that basically heats the hot water for our radiator circuit in the house. So the smart, the EVE smart thermostats or the smart TRVs yeah. on the radiators at that end, they basically are telling us that this, temp this radiator is up to temperature or is not up to temperature. Correct. But we still needed something that was going to give the instruction mm -hmm. to the central heating to, to come on. So we installed these and they're Salus, they're mm -hmm. from Salus. Yeah. Um, and we've been happy with them. They're, they're pretty cool. Okay. They, they are- We uh, didn't have to hardwire them, um, which that, it, that was the biggest thing. That was the big, that was the big problem because it is the furthest point in the house. It's quite a long way away. Uh, so actually getting um, to, to, to wire that through would have just been, you know, Nightmare. you'd have to go through drywall, uh, go through the Bricks. stud walls and try and get it through. It, 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 it was just never going to be a solution for us. Yeah. So they are really handy in that they are wireless. You do need quite a good robust Wi-Fi system for the signal to get back to the, the nerve center, as I call it, in our utility room. Yeah. Uh, because we've got a couple of very thick brick walls in the way. 
So it is important that your Wi-Fi is quite good if you have got brick walls. Or stone, if you're in a stone, stone stone house, stone cottage. Yeah, you need to think about you know your Wi-Fi and if your Wi-Fi is really being able to yeah. get through to these thermostats. And we did have an initial issue where the, the signal was intermittent. We got a little booster, a, a Salus smart plug actually, which works as a, as a little booster. That, that did serve the purpose, but as soon as we upgraded our Wi-Fi to the mesh system, uh, it completely removed any communication issues and they just work flawlessly. So they are really good. And we've got a couple of um, um, YouTube videos on the, the mesh system and the internet yeah. and all the Wi-Fi um, stuff that we use. So you can just uh, have a look at that. So we've got these uh, Salus thermostats, which are wall mounted. Mm -hmm. They're battery operated. Uh, they take four little batteries. Again, just as with the smart TRVs, they last about a year. Mm -hmm. Uh, so it's really handy and if they do, um, the battery starts to run out, it gives you a little thing saying the battery's running low. So we just had to quickly change the battery in the camera and I got myself <laughs> a cup of tea. So we've got these Eve Smart TRVs uh, and they basically regulate the temperature in the radiator and we've got the Salus on the wall, the thermostat's on the wall yeah. and that is basically what calls for heat yeah. and says oh, this room is, is not a temperature and it needs to come up. Mm -hmm. that's giving the instruction and that turns the system on, gets the, the heating going to the radiator yeah. and the radiator has this little smart TRV and that's what it's saying, yes, mm -hmm. I'm hot, no, I'm not. Yeah. So we were quite strategic with the way we positioned these smart uh, thermostats. You could obviously put a smart thermostat in every single room uh, to, to, to call for heat. That would be nice. But the expanse behind that is considerable. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we put two at the coldest end of the house. Uh, so because it's the coldest end, you know, they will, it'll always be the coldest. So if those rooms come to temperature, mm. chances are this whole side of this house is up to temperature or warmer. Uh, so we basically did that to economize uh, and basically have a more strategic approach uh, to calling for heat. Yeah, so I think that when you put air source in, mm -hmm. uh, you put your air source in and for example, if you've got um, a underfloor heating, yeah. the thermostats should speak to your, um, your central heating. Definitely. But if you've got radiators, that's not necessarily going to call for heat. So you put the air source in, but unless you've got something that's calling for heat in the rooms that have got radiators, yeah. you've got nothing that works properly. Correct. When you get your quotation mm -hmm. for your air source, you, one of the questions you need to ask is, okay, that's great. That's all the equipment for the air source. Mm -hmm. I've got radiators. How are these radiators going to speak to the air source and get the, the heating yeah. to it? So you really need to think about that and speak to the provider or the installer or the person who's, mm -hmm. who's selling you this to make sure they either uh, maybe they're not able to provide you with a complete solution, yeah. but you can speak to them and figure out what is going to be the best um, alternative technology that you need in order to cope with that heat. So maybe you'll have to go out and purchase that separately, or go to another company, mm. or you know do what we did, which is you know for example find something that we know yeah. would work for us. But if you're lucky enough to get a company that provides the whole thing, that would be you amazing. Could, I mean, again, we're speaking about this from a complete retrofit perspective. Yeah, so, and our experience. And our experience. I know that a lot of new builds and a lot of new properties that have been built with air source heat pumps in mind, the control mechanisms are a lot simpler. Yeah. Uh, a, a lot of them even just use the main control unit that's positioned in the hallway that basically regulates the entire property. And even a lot of the TRV, a, a, a lot of the radiators don't have TRVs on them. They're just completely open loop systems. That was never going to work in our case. Uh, so we had to find the most sensible way of um, calling for heat because you also don't want to be in a situation where the pump is turning on, it's heating your buffer, and there's nowhere for that hot water to go because nothing's up to temperature. That's why you've got to be quite thoughtful with regards to what's calling for heat and at what point in time and how that hot water gets distributed throughout the system. It's pretty complicated. <laughs> We're having a few technical issues today. The camera keeps overheating. We're not yeah. sure why. So we do have to keep stopping and starting. So we apologize for <laughs> any change in scenery. Basically, the way that our old oil boiler was set up is that it would come on at predefined uh, portions of the day. You can do that with an air source heat pump. Yeah. The problem is that in our case, because we've set the air source heat pump away from the house, if we did just set it on to come at specific points during the day and it there actually wasn't a requirement in the rooms uh, for heat. 
it would just be heating our driveway. Be basically, the, the buffer would be heated, and the water would just be circulating, but it would actually go into any of the rooms that actually, because they don't need heat. If we, if we set it to, to force the schedule, so to say to the air source, you have to come on at 7 a.m. and turn off at 9 a.m. Yeah. And those the smart TRVs that we put on the radiators are already registering at 7.30. They're already it's registering. Warm. It's warm. We don't need heat. Yeah, as you're saying, that hot water then just gets pushed under the driveway to the to the utility room and then back again. Yeah. It doesn't go off anyway. to the radiators because radiators don't need it. So it is, as you said, it's you have to really kind of think about that, mm -hmm. about if you're not going to have, we don't have a schedule for that very no. reason. We don't rely on a schedule, we rely on the actual temperature of that room to demand its heat when it needs it so that we can maintain a more of a consistent heat across the whole central heating system all the time, 24 hours a day. And that's precisely why we put the smart thermostats in the coldest portion of the house. Yeah. So just to touch on um, our experience of what when we were actually looking at this, because when we first started to look mm. at this, oh, it was such it was a, such a minefield. It was so complicated. We didn't we didn't understand the call for heat thing. We thought that when we put the smart TRBs on the radiators, yeah. they would call for heat, and we didn't understand why they weren't calling for heat. We thought, well, they're digital. They're wireless. They're smart. <laughs> <laughs> Not that smart. <laughs> Why aren't they smart enough to, to ask for heat? So we relocated into the living room because the camera was absolutely hating being in the sun in the conservatory. So hopefully this is more stable. Um, but we wanted to touch on just when we first started to look at yeah. um, controls and when we first Get, you had to deal with this and we were a little bit overwhelmed yeah. and there was an awful lot of different solutions on the market. Um, and Tad, I think Tado was one company we looked at. Tado was Nest. There was a whole bunch of them. Tado was at. one of them. Uh, Tado basically try and give you the the biggest and most complete system available, and it's very expensive. Mm. And the reason for that is because they give you, well, they try and sell you a smart thermostat with a smart TLV for every room, mm. which is great. Uh, I, I think that that probably is more suitable for maybe an oil boiler type setup. Definitely, I don't think at all suitable for an air source uh, heat pump scenario like ours, uh, purely because you don't need that many smart thermostats calling for heats with the air source heat pump. There are also a lot of other solutions uh, which require a lot more invasive work. So if you are maybe uh, retrofitting a, a, a property and you are actually removing a lot of the stud walls, you can actually hardwire everything. Uh, and, that, and that is probably the best scenario to go forward because then everything is working uh, directly and actually calling for heat uh, through a wired solution. Yeah. Uh, but obviously that's not going to be appropriate for everybody. And, you know, you, you have to be doing quite a lot of renovation work in order to be able to do that. And that was never an option for us. Yeah. So there's a lot of different solutions available. And I think that we felt that when we looked at it, it, was, it would have been very easy to upsell us and sell us, uh, you know, a a bit of an over-the-top solution mm -hmm. which would have been fantastic if you've if you've got yeah. if budget is no um no question yeah. and you can just knock yourself out brilliant you know go for it um we were definitely on a tighter budget and we had to just be very strategic about what equipment we purchased mm -hmm. there is a way of doing it um but it is more of a jigsaw puzzle situation yeah. scenario and it does require a lot more research from your side a lot more kind of thinking out what works with what what doesn't work with what how you know you could for example install something that's wireless and i think mm. also for me mentally just getting my head around as soon as somebody says wireless or it says wireless on a box i just presume it means wi-fi it doesn't necessarily mean that so for example mm. if it's wireless it just ne it might just mean that it's just not hardwired into the wall, yeah. um, but it might not be Wi-Fi enabled. It might be radio frequency, in which case you've got even bigger problems sometimes because that even that that struggles even more to get through brick walls and stones. So yeah. Also, just dis uh, distinguishing that then. So wireless, Wi-Fi. Is it smart phone enabled? Yeah. You know, just because it's Wi-Fi enabled doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be speaking onto your home kit. Um, so there's an awful lot of kind of different things to look at and to, you know, look on your checklist of what's important to you and what do you want um, and then kind of tick all of those off. And I'm, I'm sorry to tell you, but it did take us hours, days or weeks, oh, weeks. Um, to it, sort it, it out. It took us months to just get our head around it. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing I actually haven't mentioned is that a lot of these wireless solutions require what they call bridges. 
these are things that actually plug into your router. Uh, so we've got one for the heat miser, we've got one for the Salus. And if you've just got like a Sky router, you're going to run out of plugs very, very quickly at the back, Ethernet sockets. Oh. So what we've actually done, because I'm a bit of a geek, uh, I've got a switch upstairs, yeah. which is basically uh, an enormous um, thing that you can Box. just put a lot of different Ethernet ports into, Yeah, 32 of them. So we can just, you know, we can keep plugging stuff in. But if you just want to do this uh, using multiple solutions, that is something you're going to have to definitely uh, keep in the back of your mind because your router at the house is not going to have enough ethernet sockets to to get all of these bridges in yeah in an ideal world you're dealing with either a self build or a new build um and it's a lot simpler yeah, it requires a lot yeah. less um tech and gear um it's really just retrofits isn't it and and renovations when you're looking at mm. not even a full renovation a partial renovation because that's kind of what we took on and yeah. um, so at, all the walls have been done the um, plumbing electrics had been done um, so we couldn't really tamper with that or go into that what we were dealing with was more things like bathrooms utility rooms kind of um, aesthetics mm. and interiors that's when it gets more complicated mm. when you're not starting from scratch or you can't start from scratch um, and that's when you just require a lot a lot more different things to kind of work together and that's, that's actually an, a very excellent point that you raise is that uh, the previous owners when they actually replumbed this whole house they put all of our radiators on one enormous circuit so we can actually get away by having the two smart uh, thermostats at the far end of the house because as soon as they call for heat every single radiator in the house if the, if the TRV needs that heat it yeah. opens and it, and it pulls that heat in if you've got multiple zones you're then going to need at least one smart thermostat per zone to be able to call for heat for that zone right. so that's also a very important consideration so you know, for us, it took months to get our heads around with regards to what's in the walls, yeah. uh, which rooms work the best, uh, what the best solution was. Yeah. Uh, and it just, it takes time. Yeah. It takes a lot of patience and it takes a lot of research. Yeah. Now that we've got all of these different things, we've got the salus on the walls, we've got the e thermostats. Mm. Does that, and the heat misers, does that all work through um, HomeKit on your um, iPhone? Only some of them. So uh, a good point. So the heat misers work through HomeKit, which means that we can um, control them through that. Mm -hmm. The Salus ones are not HomeKit enabled. So oh. basically our uh, thermostats, uh, sorry, our radiators are not technically on HomeKit, but <laughs> the, the smart TRVs are. So, you know, it, it's, it's a hodgepodge of different things. They all come with their own apps anyway. So it is just a matter of uh, configuring those okay. if you want a centralized solution like we are on apple 90 percent of it is there uh, it's just that our um, smart thermostats can't be controlled through home kit which is not the end of the world to be honest because that's not something that you're going to be changing on a weekly basis yeah we've set our schedules now for the the rooms uh and we probably haven't changed those now in over a year so yeah. once it's configured it's up and running you're not really going to fiddle with that the convenience is having stuff on your home kit, which actually does regulate the temperatures. So it's great that our heat misers are. We can go into the home kit app quite quickly, turn room temperatures up or down. Uh, and because they are also calling for heat or not calling for heat, uh, that, that also regulates that. So just talking about the brands that we've got and the other brands, we, we, we did contact Honeywell and they seem to be fairly responsive. Yeah, reasonable. Um, uh, the heat miser that we've got that they were reasonable? Heat Miser was great. Their customer support is, is fantastic. Uh, we actually um, it stopped communicating with our home kit. Their support staff were very, very helpful. They, mm. were, they were great. Mm -hmm. It's actually worth mentioning, I've forgotten, that one of the Salus units had actually stopped working uh, after about eight or nine months. It just, it just stopped responding and it just stopped working. Uh, we contacted Salus. They sent us a replacement unit within uh, inside two days. Wow. So again, fantastic customer support. Okay. So in terms of Heat Miser and Salus, satisfied with both of them. And Eve's customer support is second to none. They're oh. responsive, helpful. We've got a lot of Eve products. So we've uh, we've asked questions about them. Uh, they will go out of their way to try and help you. So you know the three brands that we've got. Fantastic. And then uh, the other brands that we looked at, we said that we looked at Honeywell and they seem too reasonable. Yeah. I can't remember who else we looked at. Uh, Tado, I would say 
not that helpful, no. very aggressive to just try and get the sales, weren't really willing to answer too many of our questions. That was two years ago, so maybe they've improved maybe. things, but two years ago yeah. we had, uh, I would say it was quite a negative experience dealing with them. Definitely, and it wasn't, it wasn't just one isolated experience, I actually tried to call them two or three times, Yeah. Uh, and I, I got through to multiple people and they just... They just yeah. weren't willing to give you the information. And it is a complicated subject. Yeah. Uh, this whole concept of calling for heat. Yeah. When, when something's running 24-7 and you're trying to get different rooms at different temperatures. Uh, it, it's something that we now feel comfortable about. But it's taken us quite some time to get there. So. And I think also when you start off, especially for us, yeah. because it has been, we have had so many different things to deal with. The underfloor, the radiators, mm. um, then putting in the air source, etc. You, you, you kind of... I mean, we felt a little bit stupid, didn't we? We, we felt a little bit out of our depths, overwhelmed. We didn't really fully understand the answers that we were getting. We didn't feel like we were asking the right mm -hmm. questions that we knew we needed to ask questions, but we were just so feeling in the dark a mm -hmm. lot of the time. My only advice to you is if, if you feel like you're not getting it, don't feel like you're not getting it because <laughs> you're, you're, I don't know, um, not fully understanding yeah, it. Totally. Just keep asking until you do get it because you're not the only one out there. And I think We've that... had so many questions, as you said, that ask us about how are we controlling the, the various portions of our property. Yeah. People that have moved into houses that have had air source heat pumps that maybe they don't have the proper controls in place. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> as you said, don't be scared to ask questions, which is why yeah. it's frustrating when you go speak to a specialist and they aren't willing to actually share that information with you. I think I would just say that it's kind of like almost like um, finance, the finance world. You know, I think mm. that a lot of people feel bamboozled. They feel that they go to somebody for some financial advice and they just get overwhelmed or tsunamied with numbers yeah. and the numbers don't, don't really add up and they're not really making a lot of sense. And they you kind of get to a point where you think, mm. I won't ask any more questions because I'm becoming a nuisance or it's becoming, you know, I, maybe I'm it's not reflecting on me well. I think that we had that kind of, the same kind mm. of, um, you yeah. know, vibe with regards to central heating. And I would just comfort you in saying, do not feel like no. that. Please feel free to ask lots and lots of questions. And if you're not getting it, you know, stand there with confidence and say, I'm sorry, I don't get it. What do you mean? What, why is that not calling for heating? Mm. And just keep asking until you do get it and, and ask the, the, the yeah, whoever it is that you're agree. speaking to, to explain it to you in layman terms, in simple terms, until you do understand it. Um, and, and don't feel bashful or shy about that. So I think that uh, hopefully answers some of your yeah. questions. Um, I don't think our camera is gonna last that much longer. Yeah, <laughs> We're having bizarre. some real technical issues with it today. Anything else? Uh, if you've got any questions with regards to controls you know please leave a comment below hopefully we've explained to some degree you know how it is it is complicated as we said a couple of times yeah so if you've got questions leave a comment below uh, we'll happily try and answer that to the best of our ability we're getting a lot we've had so many comments yeah. and so much engagement and interaction on the last few it's episodes been fantastic so thanks to everyone oh massive thank you honestly i know that we say it, we've said it the last few videos and um but we really genuinely mean it thank you so much mm. for spending your precious time we're all busy we've all got yeah. stuff to do and for you to to take time out of your day to watch these videos means the world to us we really appreciate it we hope that we're helping you on some <laughs> on some level keep the faith you know yeah. feel positive about it if you're struggling with solutions there are solutions out there Definitely. um and you know hopefully you know, this will you know point you in the right direction and please feel free to leave comments below we absolutely love comments we love hearing from you guys yeah so that's a wrap thanks very much for watching Give us a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button below if you haven't done so already, and we'll see you on our next video. Stay warm, stay safe.